More on this from the newsroom. And Corey, there's actually a business story here as well, right? Perhaps. Uh, joining me in unholy interview matrimony, Vicki Ziegler, divorce attorney and author of The Premarital Planner. Vicki, let me start the whole thing by saying congratulations, Zuck and Mrs. Zuck. We wish you a long life together, sincerely. But I wonder if the timing of this strikes you as intentional. I think potentially there may be something here uh, underlying this particular date of marriage. I mean, it makes it strange coincidence that the IPO happens and then they get married a day or so after. So I think it was a very smart move uh, by Mr. Zuckerberg, who probably spoke to a divorce attorney or two if he doesn't have a prenuptial agreement uh, to make sure that the valuation is set and that, quite frankly, he, his premarital asset is actually preserved. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think one of the important things is I can't hear anything. nothing else about this IPO, nothing else about this IPO at all seems to be accidental. The timing, there's a lot of discussion about tax sales and about the lockup period ending for the tax period. So I got to wonder that he, you know, or assume that he's taking a complete look at all of his assets and, and understanding what assets are his premaritally and what assets are not. having trouble with that interview the guest could not hear you correctly so we're going to head to break and we'll be back in a few moments welcome back to bloomberg west let's head back to corey now with that interview corey all right vicky ziegler hope you can hear me now all right the the, the whole deal was not accidental everything that seemed to be planned tax assets carefully planned what would be the advantage to waiting till after the ipo to get married. Okay, so the first thing is obviously any of these stock options, any of the additional shares that he's going to purchase um, after the date of marriage will be the marital portion. Anything that obviously was acquired before they actually wed, they went down the aisle, is going to be separate and apart. The question I really have from a financial perspective, if there is no prenuptial agreement, in the event he dies, right now she stands to inherit the bulk of it unless his family would contest. So those are some of the questions that I'm asking right now. There's retirement, there's stock options. All of those things are fair game if there's no prenuptial agreement in place, which to me would be ludicrous for a man like this who is one of the wealthiest young men in the world. Well, and also with this company, it's very unusual for shareholders because it's what's called a controlled company. Mm -hmm. He owns uh, and controls the majority of the shares, separate owning and controlling them. So this, I think, is a matter that affects all the shareholders. If that holding were to get split up, the entire corporate structure could change for this company. I mean, this could be a financial carnage situation in the event of divorce without a prenup. And even if there was a prenup, quite frankly, he owns, I think, 28% uh, of this company. He's the voting share, majority shareholder. But at the end of the day, the books, the records, the flow of his income that's received would be analyzed. And that could be devastating. Even the key people that are running this company would be deposed. I mean, it would be, um, I mean, 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollar endeavor to try to figure out what Priscilla Chen ultimately would be entitled to. So I think people really need to kind of take a step back, hope that he did some premarital planning like I talk about and write about and, and ultimately stays happily married forever, quite frankly. Have you seen people who should have done premarital planning and don't, however? All the time. That's why statistics show first marriages end in divorce in about a 50% uh, bracket, second time 62%, third time 74%. So obviously people are in this vicious financial cycle. They're not being smart about getting married. They're not taking those important tips. They're not really talking about money, the smart things that marriages need to work on and talk about before you actually get married. And that's why the statistic goes on and that's why divorce attorneys like myself are, are honestly in business. So we want to really help people. We want to have some humanity and make sure that people are talking about the right topics before they get married. So when things do crumble or an issue arises, they're ready and prepared for it. I know you're in New York. Is there anything peculiar about California law as it relates to this deal? Oh, absolutely. It's a community property state, one of only nine, I believe, which means if, in fact, there is no prenuptial agreement, everything that's maritally accrued after that wedding, after that Saturday wedding, is going to be shared 50-50 unless Mark Zuckerberg can prove it was derived from premarital earnings, income, or from his company. And you know what? She can fight, 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 and I don't think any judge in America issue alimony, right. a whole host of issues that he's going to have to handle if there's no prenuptial agreement. Okay, Vicki Ziegler, divorce attorney. I'm so glad we could reunite and our, our separation <laughs> was not you. final. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, time. and I was nice to you, Emily? see? <laughs>